Deputy Prime Minister Bill English. What do you think of uh, social innovation? What does that mean? Oh, it means using people's best ideas to come up with um, new, new solutions to old problems. Uh, and generally those, those innovation occurs on the margins with people who are under the most pressure, who've got the least money and the biggest need. And we need, governments need ways of scanning the horizon to find those things and then to nurture them in development. So we've got less money than ever to spend on problems. Does that mean we have to compromise on social issues or is there a third way? Well, we will still have more money than we've ever had, actually, uh, because our spending on these big areas, law and order, health, education, social services, will keep rising, but more slowly. Uh, and what we need to do is get used to the fact that throwing more money at it isn't going to solve it. Uh, so over the next five years, the whole of government is going to, end, is going to need to get a bit more lateral because we are, owe it to the most vulnerable people uh, to... Uh, provide them with a sense of security, but also more pathways out of um, out of poverty or out of um, joblessness or out of helplessness than they've had before. Because clearly, throwing money at it hasn't worked. Absolutely. So look, I run a couple of social ventures. One's a cycling community where we get people cycling to work. We've got about three million kilometres cycled in the last four or five months between here and the UK. Um, I run a little community centre downstairs in my house with about seven computers in there trying to upskill and train people. I see it as a grassroots thing, obviously. I think, hey, I'll use some profits from my business to start building some social ventures. Where does government fit in, do you think? And is there a, is there a way to connect now? Well, I think government wants to harvest those sort of ideas. Almost all really successful social innovation is, is grassroots because you need a fine-grained understanding of how people live, what drives them, why they do some things and not others, and you have to be with them to understand that. Governments aren't with them. Governments are distant. They're up there. They're in big office buildings. Um, they have processes. So the challenge for government is to harvest those ideas uh, and try and incorporate them in the way that government does business. So sometimes that means just buying the idea in to, to a public service. Sometimes it means providing a, um, an opportunity, a bit of money, uh, some credibility for someone else who's doing, who's um, innovating. Some of the government information, like you know, you've got a lot of information on how New Zealanders, where they live, how they move. Do you think that's going to be something that's going to be potentially opened up a little bit so that you know social entrepreneurs can start to go, look, I can see this whole segment of society we'd like to reach and help, and kind of work on that basis? Is that a possibility? Government holds a lot of information it doesn't use for much. Mm. Uh, and one of the things a government can do is uh, what I call inside-out government, and that is put all the information it has out there. Who knows what it'll get used Absolutely. for? Absolutely. What we do know is that it's more useful to have the, the, the collective brain out there working on the, working on the data um, or analysis rather than having it sitting on a shelf or on a hard drive um, in government where no one's, no one's using it. So information is power, information is a resource, uh, it's public so it's free, so let's just give it to them. Well, I think the whole IT industry and the online sector is going to be pretty impressed with hearing something like that because there's a lot of, I think, innovation that can be done on the back of this data, so that's pretty cool. What do you think of the Centre for Social Innovation? What, what's its role here as having a starting point anyway? Well, look, I think they've yet to establish a role, but uh, th there is, government needs a whole range of tools um, it needs a good, very good understanding of what's happening at grassroots, uh, where, there, where there are needs. It also needs people who think systematically mm. about how government can change the way it does business. Um, and the institution may prove to be one of those. Uh, they've brought Jeff Mulgan over here as an international reputation um, and, and his ability to get government to change. Mm. And uh, if the institute can um, fill that role, that would be good. Uh, but government needs a whole range of tools. Um, this could be one of them. So not to put you on the spot, so how would, let's say, a social entrepreneur who may have an idea, actually, no, no, I won't say an idea, something they're working on, an active project with some runs on the board, how do you think they engage with government? What's kind of the, the pathway? I know it's early days for you in government too, so don't expect any big answers. <laughs> well, look, it's tricky for them because government looks so monolithic and uh, their interaction with government uh, can be pretty difficult. People who um, have their own range of authority and don't have the, don't have the ability to st st step outside that. Uh, so we can't, what, what government needs to do is create those opportunities. Um, now having got into government for three or four months, um, tidied up the books a bit, <laughs> uh, we now need to move on to the next stage which is recognising there's going to be a time of constraint. Uh, needs are going to grow in a recession, not shrink, and we need to think 
think about how we, we need to create opportunities for the, the social entrepreneur or often the supplier, people who already supply services to government know a great deal more about those services than government That's does. That's true. And they need a place where uh, they can share, where we can harvest their wisdom. Uh, and that's going to be a bit of a challenge, but one we're up for. So you've got to get home to the kids, so I'll let you go. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Peace Good out. to see you.